Leon Hulsenberg, a dominant middle stretch of frames two through six. She's able to put away Jen Higgins and move on to the next match, just the penultimate match for the USBC Queens. For well over a century, they've been your source for all things bowling. And to this day, USBC is leading the way as the governing body of the sport. If you haven't looked at USBC lately, you might want to look again. The United States Bowling Congress is more than what you see out here on Sundays. We're the industry leaders in research with cutting edge technology on the lanes and off and are literally leaving our mark on every pin, ball and lane. USBC is vitally important because they set the worldwide standard not only for bowling balls but for pins, for lanes, rules. USBC is looked for to set the standard and set the playing rules that all of us follow and standardize this game. The USBC Open and Women's Championships are the largest participatory sporting events in the world. Plus, USBC is always working to educate through a coaching department that is second to none. It's not just about coaching the bowlers, it's about coaching the coaches. USBC coaching department, what we focus on is making sure that the coaches have the best tools possible to make the bowlers at the grassroots level the best they can be. USBC membership supports Team USA, veterans, the Special Olympics, and the fight against cancer. This is really, really special to me because I had my own scare with breast cancer just this past April. And you look back and USBC has raised over $9 million to bowl for the cure. And that's just one of the charities that USBC is involved with. USBC, working every day to create lifelong bowlers. To become one of the nearly 2 million members of the United States Bowling Congress, please visit bowl.com for more information. Shayna Ong, one of the most experienced players in the Far East, brings her talents to Las Vegas, and she'll take on Hall of Famer Leanne Holsenberg in the penultimate match of the USBC Queens presented by Storm next. Leanne Holsenberg with a very smooth 235 defeats Jen Higgins, but this might have been a breakout tournament for Jen, and she is lane side with CDB. Jen, I know it's not the finish that you wanted, but you really did have a great week. Now, in speaking with your husband, Dan, he said you were going to follow the transition, keep chasing and left, but this right lane got a little tricky. What happened out there? I was chasing it in, but I wasn't chasing it fast enough, and you only get so many frames out there, so by the time I figure it out, the match is over. So oh. if Leanne will give me a rematch, I'm ready, yeah. but I can't do that. <laughs> well, maybe next year. What do you think? Yeah, next year I'll be ready. Great week. Back Thank to you, you Dave. I think of the line from the Rocky movies, ain't going to be no rematch, <laughs> at least not here. Well, there's Leanne, and this one ought to be really interesting with Leanne Halsenberg and Shayna Ung from Singapore. Liam was 5-1 in match play, averaged 225.27. Actually had a higher average in match play than Shayna. Both these players lost to our top seed. Every time she says needs to hook, oh. she usually gets a break. She got an enormous break that time. That went from, it didn't really seem to be that light. That would have been a, that would have been a terrible break to almost a strike. You see, as everything goes back, the hit pin spins around and actually hits the four, which knocks into the eight, and the eight just touched the ten. And a clean start that time for Leanne. Now introducing the number two seed from Singapore, Shayna Ung. Shayna Ung was leading after 15 games. In fact, was leading all the way until Diana Zhivablov, who is our number one seed, defeated her in the qualifying match for that number one seed, 688 to 628. What do you, what do you like about her game, Chris? There's a lot of things to like. Great leverage and a tremendous release. <laughs> And I've been stumbling around in the dark, but unable to help her out on the 10. Boy, as you watch the six pin right here, it's going to go to the flat gutter, not get there. The head pin's going to come across, but go just behind the 10. Pretty good opening shot, though.
All right, a clean start for Ong, and let's get to Carolyn with a report on Shayna. Shayna was very interesting to talk to. Um, I got to bowl next to her during the week, and she was extremely determined to be successful in this tournament. She did not bowl very well at the World Championships, which took place before this event, and Team Singapore is always a dominant force during the World Championships, so she was a little let down. She really practiced hard in between the tournaments, and she was ready to go, and this here proves it. She got out very quickly, Carolyn, and she talked to very much about her disappointment for Singapore, and that was the chief motivation for the Queens. Single pin behind there. This is the second USBC Queens for Shana. She shot 300 in qualifying in 2010, finished 49th, though, after losing her first couple of matches. How about some keys? Well, the keys for Shana are pretty simple, actually. She's got a little bit of a tempo. She's got quick feet in general, likes to get, get moving up there fast. If she can keep that tempo slower, she'll feel the ball at the bottom, and then she's able to catch it all at the bottom. This last shot was an example where she got a little quick, misses it at the bottom, and goes by the head. Now. No trouble there. She's one of two international players, our number one seed from Latvia, Diana Savialova. And 15 countries, and we're counting the United States as one of those, of course, entering in the Queens this year. Great field, 200 players, one of the biggest we've had in recent years. In fact, eight players from Singapore and some really good ones like Jazreel Tan included, great college player from Wichita State in this field. I'd like to be that disgusted with a strike, <laughs> okay? So let's take a look at uh, the Queen's format. Again, this is a major championship in bowling. You start with 201, 15 qualifying games. We send a few home, cut to the top 63, and the defending champion, Deanne Rasbady, getting the opportunity to stay in there as well. Double elimination, three game matches. And if you lose early, you are bowling a lot to have any chance of making the show. And then seeds three through six bowled four bowlers, three games for only three spots. And it was Jazreel Tan who did not get out of that. She finished in sixth. Well, my goodness, there's a message that she had to have delivered. <laughs> I like the suspense, the court of waiting around for something to happen there. This is actually a pretty good shot, but what happens when the ball gets too far behind, it cuts in and the five pin gets trapped and doesn't get all the way to the, the seven. Now, generally, the head pin doesn't lay on top of the five and get it to roll into the ten like that. Two very unusual kind of good breaks. Uh, two shots that looked like they could have struck when they hit the, the pocket initially and uh, both had split standing temporarily. Now you may notice a rather short haircut for Shana Ong. That is not her normal look. Uh, in Singapore, she had her head shaved, and I mean completely shaved, as a, not just a gesture, but to donate her hair to a children's cancer charity in Singapore. And that was about a month ago. Saw a lot of that over the last few days in qualifying. That's what she looked like prior to that charity event. Hair for Hope in 2013, and... There she looks like when it was all over with, but that's, uh, she should be commended for that, to sacrifice vanity for, to help out some young people who need help. So she can take the lead here with a double. And while she may not be familiar with American audiences, I think, Chris, it's worth mentioning again what you talked about, her presence in the Far East is tremendous. Yeah, in the Asian Games, and then she won the DHC tournament over in Japan for $60,000 earlier this year. Oof. Two, eight, and ten. And this has been the tighter lane for all the players. I wonder if she actually just hasn't played them differently enough. Thought she liked that shot a little bit there, and it went by everything. Leanne also has been a little bit light. The look on her face, she's a little bit confused that that one didn't hook more. So in a major championship, you sometimes have to take your medicine. 
And that's what she had to do there. Well, it's the U.S. versus Mexico. One of the fiercest rivalries in all the sports is back on the pitch. After the previous match ended with both teams going scoreless, both teams are hungry for a lot. World Cup qualifier U.S. versus Mexico. Coverage begins Tuesday, September the 10th at 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and, of course, live on the Watch ESPN app. That is an unfriendly rivalry in the sport of soccer. Well, this will be a sport. Yeah. That's automatic. Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> maybe, so, maybe she is utilizing reverse psychology. Perhaps all bowlers should attempt this. Dislike the shot and then get the strike. Well, she thought she got this one too far right. You can see it crosses about the 20th board. It gets about two boards right of that tracer down there. And it was a little bit firm, I think, maybe more than anything. She thought she missed it just a touch at the bottom. Kind of double dribbled on her. Struggling to find that good rhythm that she had in match one. Well, there you go. It's right now, she's got the bowling ball is listening. And Leanne Olsenberg opens up to a 23 pin lead. Watch a replay right here. See the ball coming to your screen. That one didn't bounce nearly as one the one before. And you can tell by the way it went through the pins better than the ones before. Her ball rep, Del Ballard, just walked by and said, she just needs to slow down. She's gotten a little too amped up. Yeah, through the nose that time. And leaving another split. So Shane Ong in some trouble here. Despite her immense talent, she is still young and susceptible to the shot goes light. It's hard to leave it alone and treat that lane separately from the other lane. Ball has no problem hooking so far on the right lane. Over hits it a little bit on the lane where she was fine. Turns out into a split. Yeah, she'll be 24 in October. In fact, you mentioned she's the Kelly Kulik of the East. That's who she beat in the DHC, part of the World Bowling Tour, a major championship there. She's won all over the, she's won in Poland at the uh, Cubica AMF World Cup last year. She has picked up as many medals as you there. Of course, you carry yours around. She probably has them stashed. <laughs> Seriously, I thought I was with Mr. T earlier today when you were walking around with those things on. Grab one of those moments when you can. You know? Hey, you know there what? You, go. you have more than I do. Shane <laughs> Ong, after a couple of opens, does come back with a shot she absolutely had to have because one thing you can count on with Leanne Halsenberg, she's a tremendous front runner. Getting your first look at Shane Ong, I suspect it will not be your last. U.S. Women's Open had it all. The largest crowd ever to attend a bowling competition. The largest venue in U.S. bowling history in Cowboy Stadium. And tremendous competition culminating in a win by Leanne Halsenberg, who won the semifinal match by one pin to being down by 53 and then won the championship defeating the great Kelly Kulik. It was an emotional evening all around, but everybody was overshadowed by that young man right there. Then two years old, Barrett who enjoyed the victory, got off a couple of good shots and won the hearts, and there he is right there with Dad and our defending champion, DeAndre Asbady. And still apparently enjoys the camera life <laughs> as he sees himself on one of our monitors over here. Now, we're a bunch of toy uh, trucks and cars also brought, and I don't know if it's for Gary or for Barrett, but either way, and right now, Mom is up by 34. Oh. Well, that is four strikes in six frames and three in a row. We talked at the top of the show about Leanne possibly being an underrated player. Remember, there is unfortunately no more women's tour. And I thought we made a great point, Chris. If there was a, a, a tour, or even the setup that's available now for your tour on the PBA, she would have way more than 27. Look at that CDB there, 22. Not bad, Carolyn. Yeah, 10 more years. You get softly 150 more chances mm -hmm. with her record. She surpassed that easily. And she mixes it up. And her lead grows with another four-bagger. She's strung five in a row in her first game. Now she's put four in a row up. 
Another good shot. Still having a little bit of a hard time getting it all the way up to flush on that pocket on this left lane. Mixes him up this time. She has gotten her tempo down a little bit, like Dell mentioned earlier. The ball's starting to pick up and go through the pins, at least enough to knock him over on that left lane. So Shana Hung has got no margin for error. <laughs> Ten straight back, no problem there. Well, for bowling news from around the world, plus great coaching tips and video, just log on to the new and improved bowl.com, the official website of the United States Bowling Congress. Also get a lot of live streaming for events. Great for college bowling, too. If you're a fan of collegiate bowling, bowl.com is the place to be. I think over 500 hours a year. Yeah. They stream on there. There's Lucas Wiseman, uh, Matt Canazaro, Jason Overstreet do an amazing job and some marathon hours those guys put in. Oh my oh. heavens, are you serious? <laughs> they, they ought to give you like a, a free gambling token. The only for that. true tap. Watch, something actually taps the eight on the way by. You see it trap it and stand it back up. Paralyzed it. Mm. That is an awful break in, at a time when she couldn't afford anything to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost offensive to you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a couple of those are some bad spots that that uh, are unpleasant memories. Well, Leanne has been extremely steady, not missing pockets, Chris, and she's built up yet another big lead. And again, she's a tough front runner. And awaiting the winner of this match, the number one seed, Diana Zaviablo, a product of college bowling, also the Latvian bowler. And Diana, the number one seed. And Leanne now cruising with a 55 pin lead. This is almost a replay of the previous match with Jen Higgins. And there was just a tiny availability early, and then Leanne finishing strong. And you have talked to me many times about her ability to finish people off. Yeah, Leanne's one of the great closers. She, once she gets her feel, she's able to take advantage of it as good as any man I've ever seen. That does it right there. <laughs> He's on TV again, and guess what, Barrett? Mom's sticking around. She's going to bowl one more game for the championship and try to win a second Queens and set the mark for the longest gap in between winning this championship. 1999, when back before she was married, when she was Leanne Barrett. And... For Shayna Ung, uh, this tournament is over. But again, I feel like there's so much talent there that if she wishes to bowl this event again, she may make television shows for a long time. This is a tough TV show to make. And to do what she did, she was basically one match away from being the first person, I want to say, in it was like 40 years <laughs> to lead in qualifying and be the number one seed and then be the leader of the tournament, which at the very end, Diana took care of that. But uh, she has the potential to be a dominating player worldwide for sure. Yeah, her bowling passport is stamped all over the world. And while I'm sure this is a disappointing I'm finished for her, hopefully she'll take away not just the prize money, but the experience and learn from it do have a way I, I do feel that the breaks even out over time so if you're gonna lose anyway get all the bad ones out of the way at the same yeah, time yeah it's not much fun for everybody else when you get the, when they even out oh she got a horrible break on that a pin but ultimately Leanne is just at the moment anyway unstoppable possible 270 for Leanne going in here <laughs> Well, that's just how it goes sometimes. There's nothing you can do about it, no matter what your skill. Sometimes the pins do things you don't want them to do. Basically used two balls throughout the, the entire tournament and used one of them again today.
as so often happens on TV, they're just a little bit different. And down this low end, they were lower scoring in general for the players than, uh, than some of the other parts of the house. There's one player who doesn't seem to be bothered by that. <laughs> Yeah, that's Leanne Halsenberg. It was interesting. I talked to her before. I remember talking to her before the U.S. Open, and she had felt a little dissatisfied with her game, and then she worked out very hard. But when I talked to her about that today, she said, you know, people call that a comeback. And it wasn't a comeback. I never really went anywhere. You know, there just aren't that many events available, and certain at the women's major level, there are two, the U.S. Open and this USBC Queens. And great finish for Shana. She's been very gracious, and again, uh, if you're wondering about the haircut, if you just turned this match on, that was a donation to a children's cancer charity a month ago. She had her head shaved uh, to help out young people in Singapore. I believe it was $30,000 that she raised about by doing that. that. Well, what happened there? Uh, uh, only a ringing 10 for Leanne. That's a shock. But my getting back to, to Leanne, uh, you know, she was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm happy with the way I'm bowling. She's... Working in the industry, she and her husband have moved to Utah. And she said, you know, Monday morning, 8 o'clock, I'll be at work. So she could roll a 249 for a comfortable victory. And now she awaits the number one seed, only 22 years old. Diana Zavialvi, waiting. And she might get that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> she doesn't even know she got that strike. Gary knows. Young Barrett knows. Number one, number three, the winner, $20,000, the tiara, and a chance to be a major champion and make noise in the sport of bowling. Savyalova and Holsenberg next.